right, guys, welcome back to another video. Yesterday, we had major news for the first time in a while when it comes to the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition. As we know, right now, Microsoft is trying to push this deal through, get it approved in the UK. And one way they are going about doing that is by offering a new proposal, which will give Ubisoft the rights to distribute games from the Activision Blizzard catalog in cloud gaming services. Now, this isn't going to change anything for Xbox Game Pass subscribers. All of the Activision Blizzard games still have the ability to come onto Xbox Cloud Gaming. I know there was a lot of people wondering what this really meant, but basically it is just giving Ubisoft the ability to give Activision Blizzard games to other cloud gaming services out there that maybe Microsoft wasn't going to or ubisoft being the ones in charge will just have more reach in, in the amount of cloud gaming services that they will want to provide these games to now with all that being said the reason we are at the place we are today with this deal with it essentially looking like this new proposition this new proposal is going to be the proposal that gets it passed pushed through in the uk and they're going to be able to close the deal without closing over a ma major regulator was the chess move that Microsoft did, which making which made the FTC believe that they were going to close the deal over the UK and over the CMA. So if you remember back when we all th sat through the court case with Xbox Activision Blizzard versus the FTC, which Xbox defeated the FTC in court, preliminary injunction was not granted, the appeal was shot down, all that type of stuff, making the FTC pretty much look like idiots for trying to block this deal. All of that occurred because the FTC fell for news, for the bait that Microsoft was going to close the deal over the UK. This is a report here from Bloomberg, and it says here that for Microsoft and Activision, ignoring the UK veto could come at a steep cost, up to 5% of the global revenue of Microsoft and Activision combined, or Microsoft could withdraw Activision from the country altogether, another expensive proposition. The UK is the game maker's second largest market. As reports spread that Microsoft had been toying with a workaround to complete the transaction, the FTC asked the company for a written pledge not to close without the UK People familiar with the negotiation said, but the company's litigators declined to offer such reassurance. Microsoft had forced the FTC's hand on June 12th. The agency sued in San Francisco federal court, citing the risk that Microsoft and Activision would close the transaction despite the UK veto. In fact, Microsoft and Activision never intended to close the deal without the UK sign-off. People familiar with the talk said it had all been a ruse but Microsoft's head fake had given it a chance to argue its case in public. And that argument essentially is the main thing here that is going to push this deal through across the entire world with, with the UK, with in the F, with the America and all that type of stuff. And the place we are at today is I think this is kind of what their plan was. They knew that they had to do something, pull something out of the bag here to make sure that the CMA would go ahead and close the deal and offering this new proposition with Ubisoft, which we saw yesterday, giving them the cloud streaming licenses for the Activision Blizzard catalog, could be that ace that they believe is going to get the deal passed and going to get the deal closed. So hopefully this thing comes to an end. It seems like from other reports that Microsoft knew that this thing was going to go all the way to October. And that's essentially the new date that we can all look forward to, October 18th, where we're going to have that the the last date they have to make a final decision. I've also seen other reports that it looks like the CMA is going to act swiftly on this new proposal. We're not sure here, but it does look more and more like this deal will be closing sometime soon, at least the next couple of months. So hopefully this will end soon. Hopefully it will all be over with. And hopefully the next big piece of news in this case in the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition is the deal is closed and Activision Blizzard Games King they're all a part, first party of the Xbox catalog. But let's jump over here. That wasn't the only thing that happened yesterday. Yesterday was actually a major day. We also had uh, Gamescom Live, the showcase at Gamescom, Jeff Keighley's show. And it was a decent show. There was pretty much everything we've already seen, not, no big surprises whatsoever, but he really tempered expectations before going into that show, saying that... 
it, there wasn't going to really be anything, any major announcements, any major reveals for games that people that would blow people's minds. But just a lot of stuff that we already saw in deeper dives into other games. I'm not going to go over the entire list, but there was a decent amount of stuff that I'm looking forward to from the Gamescom opening night live. I mean, games that I was already excited for, such as Mortal Kombat 1. We got the Tekken 8 reveal in terms of the release date, fighting games are completely revitalized now. We're getting all of the new fighters in, in the biggest titles from Mortal Kombat to new Street Fighter to new Tekken. Now all we're missing is a new Killer Instinct, which we're also getting a 4K update to, but hopefully they will release a new Killer Instinct as well. So fighting games are alive and well in 2023 going into 2024. So that's pretty cool. But on the Xbox side of things, we did see a couple of things. Phil Spencer, first of all, won an award for being the greenest studio. Xbox Game Studios, I guess, was the greenest studio out there. Came on, talked about how they have code where it allows the developers to see just how much power draw they are getting from the consoles which helps these games i guess be more green something along those lines but he did win an award he, he went up on stage and then we got a couple of announcements of games coming to xbox game pass and then a shadow drop that is available right now so there were the surprise shadow drop of age of empires 4 on console which i think is great i've been looking forward to this game coming over to console and seeing how it feels in a controller and how they've done the control scheme there was a preview of the control scheme on the trailer that they put out looks very well done looks very kind of similar i would say to halo wars a bit with the spin wheel obviously it'll be a different style of game but i'm excited to see just exactly how this game functions and holds up on the xbox consoles and then we also got era history untold which received a new gameplay trailer and a new 2024 release window and then there's also a trailer that came up for payday 3 which is going to be on xbox game pass payday 3 looks fun that game is all about the gameplay graphically didn't look very crazy or anything didn't blow me away at all actually a lot of people were commenting on the graphics for payday 3 thinking that it wasn't a major upgrade but i mean that game is all about the gameplay and the fun factor there was also a game pass montage and and all that type of stuff so xbox was involved in gamescom opening night live and i think the biggest thing i hear of all is the age of empires 4 shadow drop now let's jump over here to another major first party game coming out this year from xbox and that's forza motorsport i'm very much looking forward to this i'm not like somebody who's played through all of the forza motorsport games i'm not a, the biggest simulation racer guy i've said this on my channel multiple times i like arcade racers i like kart racers and i dabble here and there in the simulation racer but i am very much looking forward to forza motorsport not just because it's a first party xbox game but from everything they showed off the game is looking phenomenal i love when they talk about the technology of the tie and all that type of stuff the upgrade that's going to be from the previous games and hearing people who've had hands-on saying that it does actually feel different has me excited for forza motorsport well they talked a little bit about this game at gamescom and we also got information on the pc spec so here's a summary of what we now know more about when it comes to forza motorsport so pc players can pre-order forza motorsport on the microsoft store starting today for the first time and they can pre-order it on Steam as well. And there will be cross-play and cross-progression available across PC and console. That's not surprising. That's the great thing about the Xbox ecosystem, the Play Anywhere. I love it. I still I use it all the time, jumping from games on my PC to my Xbox. Forza Motorsport will be optimized to run across a wide range of PCs, taking advantage of cutting-edge PC hardware and technologies. And we actually got the specs that you're going to have to have when it comes to Forza Motorsport. And what's funny about these specs is that we heard about Ratchet and Clank needing an SSD to actually run this game when we saw how that was a lie essentially and it got debunked that you can actually run Ratchet and Clank, the PS5 exclusive on a hard drive device. Well, Forza Motorsport, you actually do need an SSD to run this game. The minimum specs needed are going to be an Intel i5 8400 six cores at 2.8. There's going to be, you're going to have to have at least six physical cores for your CPU. The GPU is going to be a GTX 1060 six gigabyte. Again, this is the minimum four gigabytes of VRAM, eight gigabytes of dedicated system RAM and storage. The minimum you will need in terms of storage will be an SSD with 130 gigabytes of free space. So that's the minimum specs with Intel and NVIDIA for AMD. The minimum is a Ryzen 5 1600, six cores of 3.2. You're going to need at least six physical cores as well. The minimum 
AMD GPU is an RX 5500 XT, same VRAM, same system RAM, same SSD. Now, when it comes to ideal specs, it goes all the way up to a Ryzen 7 5800X CPU, a RX 7900X C, and RTX 4080, and all that type of stuff. And then an NVMe SSD with 130 gigabytes of free space. But the interesting part here, again, is that you actually do need an SSD to run Forza Motorsport because it is a next gen game, it's going to look great. It's going to have f technologies in there that wouldn't function well on an HDD. So excited to see how this game is going to look, how it's going to look on the Series X and see comparisons on what the Series X version versus the highest end PC spec and all of that type of stuff. So pretty excited for Forza Motorsport. Now, that wasn't it. They also announced a couple of other things here. The iconic Nuremberg GP circuit will be available on in Forza Motorsport at launch and as a part of the commitment to delivering ongoing content monthly post-launch, the Nords Schlieff will be coming in spring 2024. I have no idea if I butchered those names. I don't know, but let me know in the comments below if I did, but those things are coming and future content will be coming monthly to this game. And players on PC and Xbox Series X and S can pre-order Forza Motorsport Premium Edition or upgrade to the Premium Add-ons bundle where you can play the games up to five days early and that's something that we are seeing with xbox first party games and i think it's a very smart move i actually do like it if you're subscribed to xbox game pass you get the premium edition you pay like 30 bucks or 35 bucks whatever it is you get all of the extra stuff that comes with that edition plus you get access to the game five days later to me that is just another incentive to be subscribed to xbox game pass if you love the first party xbox games that are coming out you can see the stuff that you get with each edition of the game standard edition obviously you get the base game deluxe edition you get the base game plus the car pass and then the premium and the premium add-ons bundle you get early access the welcome pack vip membership the base game the race day car packs pack and the car pass so those are the bundles and people who are at gamescom are going to get a theater experience for forza motorsports August 24th through Sunday, August 27th. Will they be treated to amazing racing action that awaits in the Builders Cup, a new single player career mode in Forza Motorsport. Sport, and then they'll be showcasing brand new gameplay featuring a group of super fast German sedans competing at the high speed Miguel circuit. So that's pretty cool. And when it comes to Forza Motorsport, there's still people who are probably going back and forth whether some of the stuff they've announced that won't be in the game of launch is going to affect this game. I honestly don't think so. I think that this game, as they mentioned here, is going to have the brand new single player career mode. I think that's going to be huge for a ton of people spending hours and hours in that itself. And they also talked about the multiplayer aspect of this game, where it looks like it is pretty robust so far with more stuff coming down the line in the future. But the key thing here, this is essentially a live service game. We'll see how Turn 10 is able to handle this live service game right off of the get-go because they are going to be bringing stuff out for this game on a monthly basis the content monthly ongoing content monthly post-launch they say that exactly there so i'm looking forward to it especially for stuff to come out after the game releases how they are able to keep this live service stuff which i'll probably upgrade to that premium add-on bundle so i get the five days early access and then the stuff coming out in the future after that so pretty cool stuff there from forza motorsport again another ma major first party xbox release this year now Let's jump over here. This one I got to talk about because I find this absolutely hilarious. Konami, you can't, these guys, they put out games and they put them out sparsely. And then when they do stuff like this, it's just, it's a shame. So they've confirmed that the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection on each system is going to be a 1080p, 60 frames per second on all of the platforms except for the Nintendo Switch, which is gonna be targeting 1080p, 30 frames per second docked, and 720p, 30 frames per second in handheld mode. And why I find this a shame is because there's absolutely no reason why these games should not be in full native 4K, 60 frames per second. These are very old games. You can get that on emulators and stuff like that. So there's no reason. And I mean, this collection, they've released Metal Gear Collections many times already. I mean, they released one on the 360, they released one on the PlayStation 3. So this isn't really anything new. This is just more and more seeming like a cash grab. I know Metal Gear fans are very excited for this, and I was actually looking forward to playing through these games with this collection here, but not having 4K, it just simply seems like 
a cash grab, something we've seen a lot of. I mean, you look at the Red Dead Redemption release on, on the Switch, you look at the GTA trilogy that came out, all of these games taking these older, very, very popular IPs that you know there's going to be a lot of hype for, and then releasing it with very minimal effort for giving us a better version of this game. So that's pretty much the same, but I did want to mention that for any of those out there looking for the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection and what they can expect from a resolution and performance mode in for this game. Now, jumping over here, we got some other news about PC Game Pass. As we know, Xbox, Microsoft, they made that deal with NVIDIA GeForce Now to bring over Xbox first party games onto that service. And it looks like this is going to be happening this week. We have this article here from The Verge and it says NVIDIA is starting to roll out access to PC Game Pass and Microsoft Store titles on its NVIDIA GeForce Now streaming service this week. PC Game Pass subscribers will be able to start streaming titles through GeForce Now on August 24th, including first party Microsoft games like Deathloop and Grounded, as well as third party titles like No Man's Sky and Mount and Blade 2. Bannerlord. So that is pretty cool. I mean, it's a another, I guess, perk to being a Game Pass subscriber where you're going to be able to use this service like NVIDIA GeForce now. Like obviously, you're going to have to subscribe to it, but you're going to be able to take those games that you have on the service itself and stream them through NVIDIA GeForce now. It says, well, PC Game Pass and Microsoft Store games will be available on GeForce now. Not all of them will be available to stream immediately on NVIDIA service. So I'm guessing that'll take time. They'll probably release them every couple of weeks or something, maybe every couple months, who knows, but they will be uh, bringing more out onto the service. It says NVIDIA has done work to integrate the Microsoft store into GeForce now, but it still needs to onboard all the games that are available on the PC Game Pass subscription. So pretty cool. They're starting to roll this out. This is all a product of the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition. I would be very surprised if this would be happening if they hadn't gone out and purchased Activision Blizzard, where there was all this concern over the cloud gaming market and Xbox was there saying, we are buying Activision Blizzard for the mobile games, but if you guys think that cloud gaming is the real problem here, we'll license our game out to all of these services and we'll make money and they'll make money and everybody will be happy. And here we are here with the NVIDIA GeForce Now service. And just two more quick things before I end the video. The Game Awards officially are going to be Thursday, December 7th, as usual. I usually stream them. I'll probably be doing the same thing this year, the 10th annual show. And I think this is going to be a very interesting year as 2023 has been a phenomenal year in games. And the Game of the Year nominations are going to be something that I will be interested in seeing what happens with that. I know Starfield's coming out and I expect that game to be amazing. So I expect that probably to be nominated. You have Baldur's Gate 3, you have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and then just so many games that are still to come out in October and that have already come out in 2023. So it should be very, very interesting what goes on here with the Game Awards this year. And just to touch on this, because I did talk about it in my video yesterday, that tease from Atari I was right. It is a brand new Atari console that is coming out. It is the Atari 2600 Plus. They say it's a modern version of Atari's classic console, which plays original cartridges. And specifically, it's going to be coming out on November 17th at $129. And they're saying that the Atari 2600 Plus has been created using modern technology to authentically replicate the original four switch Atari 2600 video game system the console will come with the classic atari style joystick and will be able to play the vast majority of original atari 2600 and atari 7800 cartridges with the provided compatibility chart showing which games will work it's also going to be coming with 10 games so you're going to be getting 10 atari games you have adventure combat dodge em, haunted house maze craze missile command real sports volleyball surround video pinball and yars revenge so you get the access to that and then you also get the access to play all of your old Atari cartridges on this thing. So this will appeal to people probably who have a large collection of Atari games in cartridge form and just want a modern way to play these games. But I will leave the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.